Greetings space scoundrels, it's Miss O'Plays back again and this week we're gonna go on a tour of my brand new smuggler's den tucked away on the frozen lakes of Zlazny 2. And this build shows off a few new techniques that I've been working with. It's got everything from a smuggler's bar called the Grackle's Nest, Aurora Labs and Fish Farm, and even a Kingpin's Penthouse at the top of that watchtower over there in the distance. Yes, indeed, Benjamin Bayou may be too essential to off, but his business is not. And that's why I built my own little neon out here, so I can do to his profit margins what I wish we could do to him. So let's get started at the heart of the action, which is, of course, that smuggler's bar, the Grackle's Nest. And this one is built into one of those large hexagonal habs. I really like the variance of windows that these habs have, but I always struggle to make a satisfying feeling layout inside because the interior is so big and awkwardly shaped. And that's why I set myself the challenge of using this particular hab in this outpost to see if I could finally do it because I have rage quit so many times trying to build in one of these and I'm not gonna lie I'm really happy with how it turned out so I'm glad I stuck with it starting off with a bar which was inspired as you can see by the vultures roost and I created this structure using a mixture of merging techniques that I have figured out with these specific cabinets and some of the floating object techniques to create that soffit around the top and I'll have the first tutorial video for those coming out next week but in the meantime, let's take a gander at this drink selection. We've got unique drinks from across the galaxy. We've got some blend from Neon, Supernova from New Atlantis, Runner's Rush from the Red Mile. And we can get all of these by calling in some favors from our smuggler clientele. And when I was laying all the place settings out here, I wanted each setting to tell a little bit of that smuggler dance story. This one has a Cyber Runner's magazine and some UC gene tags which our customer keeps as a trophy from their last successful job and probably paid off the bounty for that job in that Trekkers terminal conveniently located outside the bar. Down here, I built a little hookah lounge by sandwiching some of those hookah canisters in between two levels of semi-metal wafers and then placed one of the grinders on top to try recreate the hookah table furniture you'll see in a lot of the CD bars as you travel around the galaxy. I'm just going to slide on by past that casual seating with its casual Aurora use there and come on over to this contraband deal going right, even if poorly illuminated. And I will give you guys a better look at those lighting fixtures in a little bit because I'm really proud of how those came together. And trying to stick with that underbelly Ebside story, most of the food products here are from Xenofresh because we're going to see that fish farm in a little bit. And if we're going to farm the fish, we're going to serve them here too. Over on this table, we have some serious dealings going on. Pistols on the table in case things get ugly because we are making a deal for the rarest substance in the galaxy, Chunks' special sauce. And you're not going to let that go for just a song. Let me get a few more tables here. That one has a card game going, but alas, we cannot see it because these habs have really spotty illumination. It is true. And down this end, we have these gaming tables. And speaking of that spotty illumination, I placed both of these pool tables underneath those strip lights to give that pool hall feel. And the way the lights lined up over these pool tables actually kind of makes the terrible lighting in here worth it because I love how it illuminates these tables, draws the eye in, and how it looks like the kind of lighting you would actually have over a pool table in a pool hall. It's kind of serendipitous and I'm here for it. And I've been making the Vultures Roost my pool ball stop. Uh, you can get a full set there without getting caught stealing and they do refresh fairly frequently. So it's a little bit easier to get them from there than it is, say, New Homestead, where you might have to run to your ship to get away scot-free. No bar would be complete without a dartboard. And as you can see, this dartboard has darts in it. That's another one of those upcoming tutorials. It's been bugging me that we had darts, we had dartboards, we couldn't put them in. Well, you can, it just takes a little bit of finagling. And here, under this beautiful spotlight, our Aurora, after all, we're here to do away with Benjamin Bayou's corporate profits, and we couldn't do that without selling large quantities of Aurora. And that would be the main bar where we got some shady dealings and fun times happening. And over here is a little private lounge area where you can deal in relative peace. 
And I built these walls again by putting some of those supply shelves up on top of the cabinets. You'll see once again, you know, they line up really snugly with the ceiling and make pretty convincing walls. Of course, you can't reasonably serve drinks without a place to, I guess, deposit them. So we got this bathroom through here. Then using the pictures once again to lower those sinks out of the armpit level. But the gray of the pictures actually works really well inside here. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And a couple of bathroom stalls for that, you know, aforementioned deposit. We got some showers here because people coming from all over the galaxy, you might want to get cleaned up. Been using the backpack stands as always for the shower heads, but I also floated up there some semi-metal wafers to kind of add a bit more of a shower head feel since we still don't have any that we can build through the build menu. And that pretty much takes us through our bathroom shower area. And now we're gonna come on through this makeshift doorway that I built into our storage room. And what are we storing? Well, Aurora and Contraband, of course, because that's the kind of establishment this is. And uh, begin sticking up the shelves here. We've got some Kazambas oil. We've got the Aurora already made. A few other experimental chems that I've picked up through various quests and magazines as I've been playing. And then down here is all of our shelves with all that beautiful, beautiful contraband. Because we want to make some money here too. It's not just for the smugglers. And I try to arrange each one of these shelves by both theme and color. So we got some robot parts and things like that over there with the sentient AI adapters, some art pieces with our stolen art and antiques. And then over here, some like, little like bug paperweights and the like along with our Xeno warfare tech. And we got a lot of art pieces here too, arts and antiques, because not everything desirable and stolen or illicit comes in a briefcase. Some of it is just out here on these shelves, beautifully arranged and ready to sell to its new owner while cutting out any expensive middlemen, like, for example, their original owners. And that fridge, by the way, is just jam-packed with some of those harvested organs, because, hey, if you're gonna buy it here, we're gonna make sure it is fresh. Speaking of fresh, let's have a look at some of that Aurora manufacture and fish farming and processing. And that is over here on these lakes. I saw somebody once describe this biome as a space Minnesota. Can't really get that out of my head, so here we are you know, playing Star Fargo. And while the end result of this particular building is different than we saw on the Kodos retreat, the techniques are actually pretty much the same. Started off again by floating some rugs, which is in next week's tutorial, and then built up the walls using pillars made out of some of those planters, and then made some machinery and storage crates to create the walls. And here is our little research terminal and pharmaceutical lab. And uh, what is building this, I was going for that kind of underbelly feel again. We got some fish parts and chasm bass oil, toxins, stimulants, all that good stuff on those shelves on that table, because this is where we're creating Aurora's next big competition. And uh, I may should decorate with some of these fish carcasses. If we're gonna have forever corpses, may as well put them to good use. And underbelly has those big chasm bass hanging on the ceiling. And we got those, I don't know, shark rays over there ready to get cleaned for parts. Speaking of the fish that we actually farm, those ones keep killing my fish. These are the fish we actually farm. And there are these little guys down here. Um, they're actually pretty cute and they're being well behaved today. They're sitting in the water. They have a tendency to get up on land and get in my business, but when they're in the lake, they really add to the ambience of this outpost. And uh, yeah, you know, they're pretty cool. They're fish, what can I say? Now we've seen where the fish are growing, where they are killed, where they are processed. Let's see where all the profits go next. And follow me past this little Aurora lab and up to the lookout tower where you're gonna find that kingpin penthouse I mentioned earlier, overlooking the rest of this outpost. Yep, I finally got to build in one of those towers. Normally I run out of build budget long before I get anything up there. And you know, because it's up a lot of stairs and out the way, it's always been the thing that gets sacrificed uh, in order to decorate other habs, but not this week. This week we have built up there, so let's have a look and see what we can do in that round and somewhat awkward, but pretty ample floor space on the top of these lookout towers. And in the beginning, we got these posters up here illuminating the transition between the industrial feel of that staircase to the luxury of the living quarters. We got a pretty nice, sleek, modern looking kitchen. Not a lot of cooking because fancy people don't cook, they order takeout, but we got some drink stations, tea, coffee, toast, 
and a smoothie station. Yep, not only have I managed to stack that blender base jar and lid, but we filled it with some fruit and it does have a good little window in there so you can see the fruit through it and that's pretty cool for those with patience and a steady hand. Every single swanky hotel room or apartment I have run into has had a rather nice cocktail station. So I built one for myself up here using one of the utility carts for the center. And then I put some metal tabletops over one of the nice polished wooden coffee tables using the document trays to make it look more like a full cocktail bar and less like an assembly of little parts. We got a cool sitting room. We got that luxurious sofa a tea set borrowed from Tranquility, and uh, you know, some art and knickknacks as well. I'm gonna come on through to this little dining nook. It's a little small, a little awkward, but you can sit two in there. And we got some nice food from Jemison, because we fancy, this is fancy. Some more of those pillows like I used in Kodas to separate this area, and this is gonna take us to our walk-in closet. The glass display shelves help show off some of those collected knickknacks and divide up the wall. And I said earlier, we're gonna have another look at those lighting fixtures. So here is one of those lighting fixtures. I made that using the floating glitch that I'm sharing next week. And I started off with one of the control rods to make the center of the chandelier, then floated the velocity around it for the colored light bulbs and finished it off with one of those lattice lamps that you find to really sell it on that modern lighting fixture. Then to keep a cohesive theme going, I made these bedside lamps using the same control rods and lattice lamps lamps to again make it like a new luxurious light fixture out of some of the objects we can already build. And this of course makes up our bedroom. We got these bedside tables with some little knickknacks, boxes, things that the guests might need, plushies on the bed because I don't want to sleep without plushies. I don't think anybody here would either. And I used those hanging plants to create like another room divider. Um, I didn't want to use the glass shelves again, it ate into too much of the floor space when I needed the bed as well. But as you can see, you can fit a lot up here at the top of these lookout towers. Um, you gotta be a little bit creative, but we got four rooms in there, even if we didn't get a bathroom. I guess you're gonna have to come down all these stairs and go to the, the grackle's nest should nature call. But yeah, that would be our penthouse, our Aurora Lab, and our Smuggler's Bar. Of course, there are a few more things that these outposts usually need, such as uh, you know, ship services, utilities, and of course, living quarters. So let's take a look at those utilities right now and come on into this small animal husbandry build and see where we're doing our repairs and fixing. And I've got one of those crew stations in here because it kind of fit with the theme. You might notice as well that this is a little bit messier and less tidy than some of the other utility buildings I made in the past. That is because when I was talking to Petrosian during the Crimson Fleet mission, he told me that being a slob was part of my cover. Well, I'm a pirate now, so being a slob is part of my lifestyle, and I am reflecting that here in my utilities and manufacturing building. And that, of course, is where we're fixing our gear. Let's go take a look and see where our workers might be living. As you see, we've got those two crew stations in there so we can get a few crew members into this outpost. I built this bridge here or the little lake using some dining tables, kind of like I made the decking on Kodos. The living arrangement is a little bit different to most of my other outposts. Instead of going with the usual communal habs, I decided to go with these individual housing structures. Um, it's kind of like a sleep crate equivalent, if you will, and I made these using the airlocks and those corridor pieces. This, as we've seen in some other builds, a surprising amount of room in those corridor pieces, so each one of these is like an individual domicile. And uh, oh, there goes one of my cargo ships as we go inside domicile number one. And I mean, obviously, it's pretty snug, but we got some personal effects. We got the little kitty cat down there, the galactic cat, a bathroom. I mean, we're already doing better than the penthouse. We've got a bathroom, right? And um, yeah, I mean, they're pretty small. They're not super luxurious, but they get the job done and it is private. So that is nice. This one, we got a sleeping bag on the floor because it looks like someone has had a friend over. And we got like a little desk, one of those earth phones because old school communication is great. People aren't tracking it. They're not as familiar with it. If you're doing crime, may as well use something archaic because it's a lot harder for the space cops to cotton on to. 
and that is this one and then the third one is through here and this is the one i actually use myself uh, as the captain we got the crimson fleet will be because sometimes even willbies go bad some games magazines and again like another one of these bathrooms over on the end it's it's nice it's private it's cozy i guess my girl's a little agoraphobic when outside of those sleep crates so yeah we like it here it's snug it's my house and the final structure is actually not one of these sleeping crates it is it is instead a mess hall and kitchen yep the sleeping quarters are private but the general living area is more communal once again we got some terra brew coffee probably brought from another planet by one of those smugglers and we got some like cooking snacks nicely stocked up fridge there another one of those posters sinking down at the sink and you know it's nothing too fancy but it does get the job done it's got all the comforts of home for anyone who is making this particular outpost their home and then in one of these corridor pieces once again i decided to construct a pantry and this one is very nicely stocked we've got all kinds of food fresh fruit vegetables ramen all the kinds of ramen any ramen you could ever possibly want because that feels like something we're going to be eating out here and that's a pretty comprehensive tour of the living quarters there's still one last thing to go take a look at and that is of course ship services and as i said in my last video you can tell how fancy a outpost is by its ship services and this one i mean it's a little fancy but it's also let's face it it's a it's a crime ring so maybe not too fancy and neither is our ship services the platform here is a happy little accident i was originally experimenting with one of those military habs as a possible dorm room situation and when i deleted it it left the platform behind and that formed the foundations of this ship services it's outside but hey we got a hope tech trophy i'd like to say we were awarded it we weren't it was stolen that's what we do here and then we got a few you know caches of contraband and i made the stairs up that platform using coffee tables and shelves we don't only have human ship services though we also have this little one down here we got some willbies taking care of their willby sized ships how have they been getting around the galaxy why are they everywhere well clearly they got their own ships they got their own transportation and here they've got their own ship services and that pretty much concludes the tour of this particular outpost and i've already started shooting and editing those tutorial videos for some of the glitches used in this so hopefully they will be up soon although i gotta change one of them around because the last game update did break one of my exploits but i've already found a second workaround hurrah so as always if you have found anything in this video in any way helpful or entertaining please drop me a like and subscribe and i will be back again as always with more building tips and outpost tours Till then, bye!